Human intention can influence sensors remote. It's possible to make telepathic communication. When people are specially trained, then they can send intention to each other. Everybody can develop it. Everybody. If you want to develop telepathic communication ability, first of all, you need to believe in this, that it's possible. Then you need to believe it was all. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. To manifest bitch tits McDick Biscuit. Welcome into my home. Welcome into our home. Glad to see you. Welcome back. I got something for you. How are you? Pyramids. Egyptology. Stargate. Dean Devlin and Roland Emmerich's film in 1994. Kurt Russell and James Spader. Phenomenal movie. I don't know about the TV show. I know it has a big following, but one of the best lines ever uttered before the hero offs the bad guy. Give my regards to King Tut, asshole. Check it out. So this fella right here, um, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Before we get into it, thank you for your attention and your time. Your attention is everything. So I really appreciate you guys being here and the interactivity. Smash that like button and don't forget to... <laughs> I always would watch YouTube videos and I'd have a video that I would come across and somebody's like, do you want to know the secret to a better life? Do you want to know the secret to make millions of dollars? Well, I'll tell First, smash that. And then there's like a cartoon thumb and then ding, ding, ding. And I'm just like, uh, no. Anyway, that's not them. That's not them. That's me. Uh, we got to work through that. But look, gently press the like button and subscribe if you feel uplifted to do so. But yeah, you're here. So thank you. Your attention is everything. And um, I have unwavering faith that the right eyes, hearts, souls, minds, earlobes, everything that encompasses you who are here right now. I have unwavering faith that you're not just going to listen and hear, but you're going to feel what it is that I'm saying. So I was sitting down yesterday in a coffee shop, sipping on some Java, looking over some notes, doing some work, having a good time. And then this fella came in with a very ornate, opulent looking um, dress. He had like a robe, turban, and he had a giant sword. And I was like, Huh. And there were then after he came in, a bunch of his compadres came in, some children. There was like 15 of them. There was a woman sitting across from me and she was reading her book and she looked up. And I'm just observing. I'm sitting there. I'm like, okay. And they're all looking around. I'm like, interesting. The guy's got a sword. The fucking big ass. I don't mean like even if it was little or it just, I'm just saying to give you, to paint the picture here, guys, it was a giant sword. It was uh, interesting, and uh, they seemed to be looking for seats. I had three around me. I said, hey, would you like to come and sit next to me? Do you want to sit next to your brother, Matt, and Bitch Tit? Had a little uh, doggy dish of whipped cream for Bitch Tit. And we started talking. He offered me a French fry, which was very kind of him. And I'd asked him what he was doing. And he said, well, we're at the Indian embassy down the street. You see all the uh, kerfuffle and people milling about. Uh, it's a protest. And he went on to say that there was a skirmish and disagreement between the local farmers, the region of where he's from. And they were protesting because the government was um, not being so kind. And they are harming the people who are protesting. So what do we know? What do we know? We know that there's a lot of stuff since the dawn of time. We're not downplaying any of this stuff. We know what's going on. You're inundated by it. There's no shortage of people reporting the news on what's happening out there. Some people are indifferent to it. Some people take up the cause. They protest. They do these things. You have free will to act and react accordingly. What do you want to do about it? What do you want to do about you? What do you believe in? And at the very beginning, I paused it. Dr. Konstantin Korotkov and the fella who is interviewing him 
is, uh, his name is Armit Sandu. Seems like a nice fella. But I'm listening to this guy, and then I, after that, we parted ways. I took another French fry, and I spoke to one of my other friends who was talking about in his country how his childhood home is bombed and all of these. And he went on to say the things that are going on. Suffice it to say, he was uh, not doing so well. And the people around the world that are not doing so well, from a one on like a 10 scale of severity to like a 55. So you wanna wave your magic wand and just have world peace. Well, I haven't been around that long, but try to look at things with a healthy dose of skepticism, keep an open mind, remain hopeful, keep the faith. But there's a lot of stuff in the human condition. And this is the way it has been going since time immemorial. Like, this is the way it's going. So, yeah, Matt, we know this. What can you do? Well, I just wanted to share, uh, after I had these interactions with the fella, he also had on his uh, turban, he was talking to me. He was a martial artist. And he's, like, talking to me how, explaining to me that his God and his religion... His God tells him to be vigilant and steadfast and protect yourself at all costs against the enemy. And he listed the enemies that he had. And he said, I can carry this sword. I can also, I'm like, wow, so you're a proficient martial artist. And he showed me all of these moves. I'm like, what do you have? You're trained in weaponry, obviously, uh, nunchucks, throwing stars. He goes, oh yeah. And he takes off this like ring. It was like a silver ring. He's like, I can take this off. I'm like, oh, I thought that was a, like a headdress and uh, part of the... Uh, an ornamental headdress, but he could take it off and throw it, use it as a weapon. So this is the stuff that's going on there. And then I meditated on that, thinking about it as I often do, but these were two events in succession that had happened. This fella, all these people uh, who are going through all of this. And then my friend said he had a bit of a breakdown talking about all the things that are going on. And um, I ended up, trying to, I always want to seek. I'm always seeking. I love this stuff. I love all of it. I love spirituality, mysticism. If you want to get more scientific, use contemporary uh, language like Thomas Campbell, quantum physicist, talks about how this is a virtual reality, all these things. So what do we, what do we know that, about this? What, what, do, what are people saying? Guys like Neville Goddard, Dr. Joseph Murphy, there's a theme and a, rep um, a repetition of wisdom and insight that they are trying to share and have shared that we're lucky enough to come across and have people repeat and share. Bruce Lipton, another fellow who studies quantum, the quantum realm, if you want to call it, what we are, what this is, vibratory creative beings. Dr. Joe Dispenza, Abraham Hicks channels. Her name is Esther, I believe. Abraham Hicks, look her up. So, you can get inundated and overwhelmed by all of this stuff. But what was interesting is after these two, um, shout out to you, uh, my brother. Thanks again for the French fry in the chat. If you're watching, what can we do about it? Well, I, after I was done meditating and just going within, just relaxing, shutting out all the noise, talking, you know, internally as I do, I uh, grabbed my phone and I came across this fella. Never heard of him before. Armit, what, Armit Sandu, again, seems like a swell chap, but he had managed to get Dr. Konstantin um, Korotkov on uh, his show. And he has these many books, but uh, give you a bit of a background. Uh, he's got a book called The Principles and Practice of Integrative Quantum Medicine. And he's a computer science and biophysics professor, uh, published more than 400 articles leading journals on physics and biology. And he's got, uh, he's holding currently uh, 15 patents on some biophysical inventions. So look, if you feel uplifted to check out, giving a little love to this channel here, this guy's trying to spread some good news, trying to do what he can um, to just help in any way possible. But I found this interesting and I just wanted to come on here and share this. And if you feel inspired, check this guy's channel out. But there were a few things. So I paused it right at the beginning. If you'll notice, he says, you can communicate telepathically. 
and then he goes on to say like, you have one of the main crucial components is you have to believe. That's another thing that fellas like Mr. Goddard and so on and so forth, they talk about the power, the power of belief. What do you believe in? That's don't, not saying this passively like, I, yeah, I believe in Santa Claus. No, like what do you at a heartfelt level, your vibratory creative forces, your spark of infinitude, you're always vibrating. There's energies, all energy with the idea. It's condensed energy with the idea of separation. Dr. Um, Constantine talks about how water is a living thing. It's a very interesting interview, suffice it to say, but I wanted to come on here very quickly and share a couple of um, things for you to dwell on. I invite you to consider these things and then, hey, take them, think about them, discard if you wish, or keep going. Roll up them sleeves and stick your hand in the meatball mix, my brothers and sisters. The meatball mix of life, or if you're a vegan, Stick your hand in some tofu and kale and parsnips or whatever you uh, want to do. But get in there. Do some work. Get out there. He says your health, wealth, social status, and your overall wellness and attitude to life is all interrelated. We create our life with our own intention. So people he goes on to say in this interview, who created their life on a big grand scale, they did it first by their intention. They believed that they could. What was their intent? They had the thought, they believed in it, their intent, and by a lot of their own efforts, they then became very successful. Neville Goddard and, and people of this ilk talk about a bridge of incidents where you're divinely inspired. I of myself can do nothing. It is a father within. He doeth all the work. So it might seem daunting, but if you live in the end and you have your own moral compass, Neville talks about the golden rule. What is it you want? I don't know what you want. I don't know what you want, but you can get it. And instead of thinking about how, you will be divinely inspired to just move almost on autopilot with no sense of loss of identity. You're still you, but you're tapping, tapping, uncovering, I suppose is a good way. It's always within you. But this was an awesome interview, guys. And he said, if we don't want to apply our efforts, our intention will be nothing. It'll be bupkis. Big donut hole, folks. What do you believe in? What's your intent? And he, this is, I'm reiterating what he said. I'm not trivializing anybody's um, lot in life. It's not about that, right? I shouldn't have to explain myself, but I have to be very careful with your words. But he's like, he's like, um, Oh, you know, I, uh, yeah, I'm going to use the accent. I love listening to, uh, to people with accents. I like trying to replicate them. I still can't get British and Australian are, and there's different types of British accents. But anyway, he's like, oh, you know, that's why people I see, uh, young people, I, they claim I'm so poor. I'm in bad shape, blah, 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 blah. But okay, okay. Well, you should do it yourself. Do something for yourself. Okay, you're waiting for someone else. Is that what you're doing? People out there, there are organizations uh, to do something for you. He's like, I'm waiting for the government. I'm waiting for other people. I'm waiting for some external outside force to do for me. Make everything better. Make the, let the government do it. Let Susie Q down the street do it. Let my SP, if I get my SP back, man, always wanting something external to then create your inner happiness. And Dr. Joe Dispenza says people just are in a constant state of waiting to experience awe, waiting to experience happiness. And then you hear people say, well, happiness is a choice, but how do you be happy with all of the stuff that's going around in your life and the rest of the world? And he goes on to say that he, he talks about, you see, he see, I see these young people. It's like, why don't you get a broom and then sweep the street? It's just funny the way he said that, but I get what he's saying. I understand the intent behind what he's saying. He's like, it all comes from our intention. And then it can come into our life. 
and it projects our future. First in here, in here, listen to what all these people have to say and call to this kingdom of heaven is within me. What is that? Is it over there? Is it up there? It's within you. Your intention is everything. What you believe and concede, it's everything. You do have a gift of discernment and you got to be see, scared and cautious like, oh, I distrust everybody. No, but just work with this stuff, guys. Test it out if you are seeking desired change. And guys like this, Amrit, you know, in this particular uh, Dr. Uh, Korakov, it's really cool what they're doing. Another guy that I just came across, never heard of these guys before. So here I heard their words, came across them, and this is my gift to you. Should you want to unwrap it, play around with it. But he says it all comes from our intention and then it comes to our life and projects our future. Noticing a reoccurring theme here, guys. And he says, he's like, I was raised in the Soviet Union. And it was very tough country. It's, it still is. The wars, the conditions. He's like, still, with your attitude and your intention, you can create your life, even in the most dire, unpleasant, and difficult conditions. There was a lecture I listened to about Neville Goddard talking about the army. He's like, I don't care what people say about the army and if I should go protect my country. And this was Neville saying this. He's like, I wanted to be at home. I didn't want to fight someone's war. Some patriots and some, some people would not be happy with that. But Neville decided to use these principles and his intent and project his future. He lived in the end and was discharged from the army. Didn't have to get court. He didn't get court-martialed. He didn't piss anybody off. He ended up not fighting. He was drafted as an American citizen. And he's like, despite the fact that there was a war going on, he's like, I didn't want, I wanted to be with my wife and my kids. I wanted to create my own life, not go to war. And of course, there are some people, it, they, they will die for the country. That's a thing. Marcus Luttrell talks about if you knew how short and how quickly life can be snatched from you, you wouldn't do another single solitary thing that didn't bring you a peace or enjoyment. Marcus Luttrell, Lone Survivor, great movie. But he says, this is knowledge that he didn't create. He didn't come up with this knowledge in all of his books and all of these teachings and what he's talking about. He's like, it was always in all of the ancient beliefs. In all ancient philosophies, starting from ancient Ayurvedic understanding, from Chinese understanding of life, not just traditional Chinese medicine, but Chinese philosophy, and then of course, Buddhism, uh, and then the comprehension of everything in Buddhism and then from many other civilizations. So it's basically the same idea transferred from one civilization to the next. Certain people sharing this stuff, right? Religious texts, again, passing it on, passing it forward, paying it forward. He's like, but in principle, it's, you know, there are different texts, different Bibles, all these things, but at its core, it's the exact same principle at its core and it was created by top level thinkers people and they would tap into these higher energies higher spirits if you want and these higher spirits then transform them with this knowledge with this wisdom and now we need to accept it we need to try to accept it as it is um it's not our invention in the 21st century. No, it was here on earth for millenniums. And we need to accept it. And the good doctor goes on to describe his research that he had gathered from individual individuals in different countries across the world. And melding wisdom from both ancient philosophies and from modern times regarding quantum physics. I talk about Donald Hoffman. I talk about Thomas Campbell. Thomas Campbell actually has a really cool thing called the Global MBT Healing. You can go check it out on his website. Did a book, My Big Toe, which is an acronym for the theory of everything. He's the one who taught me, be skeptical, but be open-minded. Don't just be closed off to the possibilities. You know, do the research yourself. There's nothing like experience. I have gone into his global healings and I won't get into details. Again, some things are specific for me. I mean, some things I can share, I can tell you first person that healing intent, heart energy and intention, it is a thing and it does yield the results that you want. 
and a lot of people are just like, I want to snap my fingers and I'm healed. It's, again, I use this word a lot. It's a little more nuanced than that. You got to put in the work to do it, but it's a doable. You have the power to do it. So global healing, they have them like every other weekend or I don't know how frequently they are. I haven't gone in a while. Much love to everybody at uh, MBT. But he said it's melding the wisdom. His research that he gathered was melding wisdom from both ancient philosophies and from modern times regarding quantum physics and quantum reality. And now we can really combine together science and spirituality to understand we need to be based on the background of ancient wisdom at the same time, combine that ancient wisdom with the new understandings of what consciousness is and what life is. And then you implement it and then further develop these ideas. And he said it's only in the 21st century that we really accepted the science of consciousness. He's like, before it didn't exist, according to, to the good doctor. He says, now we've got a lot of new concepts and theories, quantum theories, that try to describe consciousness not only as just a theory, but a practical topic for people to make life more healthy for them, more abundant, make you more strong, make you more happy to help people get rid of a lot of serious problems that plague them. And he says, we are all bound together. We're all bound together. We're actually all one. We're unity. We're all bound together. He goes, yes, yeah, a lot of it depends on yourself. Again, use that before, I'll use it again. Airplane example, plane's going down, there's turbulence, everybody's losing their mind, that mask comes down, you put it on you first. And then you put it on bitch tit, or whoever's beside you. Try to save yourself first, have a lot of self-reflective awareness. Who you are, what you really want, what this ostensibly is. What, what is this to you? Not what someone's telling you. Sharing, take it yourself. Again, unbutton, roll it up, stick your hands in that tofu mix if you're a vegan. Or that ground chuck sirloin and brisket. Mm. But yeah, he says we're all bound together. We're actually all one. We are unity. We're all bound together and a lot of it depends on you, your life, but a lot of it depends on the whole. It all depends on the whole. If you wanted to, again, you got that free will, baby. It's a gift for you. So no doubt life depends on yourself. And he said, look, there are wars all around the world. Epidemics, flus, like people are dying in car crashes every day. He says, it's a very complex world that we live in. And with Neville and every other pe person, man and woman, over the years that are no longer with us, but have left texts, videos, and we're blessed to have people then take it and share it, upload it so you can hear it, and then have some guy like me come out and share it and say, hey, have you heard of this guy? Have you heard of Amrit Sandhu? And doctor, I'm just kidding, Dr. Konstantin Korotkov. He said, no, no, no doubt that life depends on yourself and there's wars. There is a lot of stuff. Like I said, my friend was in, uh, in, in disarray and the fella that I met who gave me, was sweet enough to give me those French fries, man. And the guy with the sword, I, you hear it everywhere. Neville getting drafted to go into this war back in the day. It's a very complex world that we live in and it is our goal to try to make this world better if you want to try in your own way. Well, what can I do? Something, anything. But first it starts with you and it starts in here with your intent. And he said, it's not going to happen like tomorrow. It's not going to happen tomorrow. I'm going to transform the world in a day. It seems pretty crazy to think about time in this way, but he's like, it'll take millenniums to transform this world. But a lot of people don't even believe in themselves. Believe in yourself and what you can do and accept your 
divinity and accept your power and do not trivialize even like this sounds like a stupid little thing smiling at someone how's that gonna stop the wars well if you're asking that then hey i don't know what to tell you but you you can go on your way and, and like i said you have free will but I think it's such a blessing and I'm so excited to come across channels like this to be able to soak this information up. It jazzes me up, man. It makes me want to do better. And I remember uh, Neville Goddard, next generation student of uh, Neville Goddard, Lind Lindell, Warden, coach to Carlos channel. We're instrumental in me having a lot of aha moments uh, where it was like peace, inner peace. They didn't save my life. They gave me the tools to do it. For myself and it's a daily thing and like this doctor said you're not going to just change the world like that and Lindell was funny he's like i have met people that have like turned it around they have changed their mind and changed the world like on a constant basis it's not a facade they've done it but just wanted you to broaden your conception of causality again with another video and again welcome you into my home see my guy here you look good you smell good Love you guys, and I appreciate your attention again. Very grateful for it. So go out there and go play and have fun if you're able to take some of this stuff in. But stand in your own power and believe in yourself and believe that you can actually change this world. You can change your life. That's an amazing start. And there's no such thing as small little tiny things. They send big ripple effects whether you think they do or not or you trivialize them so i love you guys and that's it man that's all i got again those pyramids stargate fantastic movie man what a great movie <laughs> i would laugh so give my regards to king tut asshole jackson has found the seventh symbol it's your stargate okay guys that's enough it's enough clowning around Bring it in. You know what time it is. Until the next video. Give me a hug.